Hello, I'm DB Velocity, and here I discuss synthesizers, sound design techniques, and music production with a focus on all hardware gear. I hope you consider subscribing, and I'll continue bringing the content as I love exploring all things synth gear related. This video is part two of using the key groups track type when working with the MPC family of instruments in the standalone environment. In the first video, I covered a common approach of creating a multi sample set, then showed ways to refine the sound for looping with crossfade settings, and a quick setup of how to make classic synthesizer parameter changes to the individual zones or entire program overall. In this video, I'll show some more uses of the key groups as a showcase of more potential with this track type and some other limitations as well. So let's dive in as it's time to explore. I have here an Arturia microroot that will be used to generate a simple tone going into a Dreadbox Hypnosis to add some extra flavor. So opening an empty project again on the MPC and having my MIDI track all configured and audio routing made, I can easily check the levels for capture and set up my auto sample parameters. So let's go ahead and have a listen real quick. Okay. Just a little bit more level there, and uh, that's looking pretty decent. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this out. So I'll keep this sound as a mono input, and for the uh, note range, I'm going to go ahead and use the same as the last video. So low note will be C1, high note will be C4, and then for the note stride, I'll set it to be three this time for some extra resolution to capture some of the nuances that the effects may impart, yet keeping it simplified a bit. So let's move on down. Uh, now for the velocity, uh, that's not going to have any effect with the micro root because sadly it does not respond to velocity over MIDI. And so moving along to the note length, let's stop for a moment and talk about some limitations. Now if you have a sound that includes a tail with external reverb or delay, you're probably thinking of utilizing the tail setting with a given note on amount. And if you watched the first video I did on key groups, you will know that the tail amount only plays back when the looping is turned off and is maybe better suited for one shot behavior. Though it's not a given, as having a note on behavior will only potentially cut off the tail unless you have a full amp release stage, though this is also dependent on the note duration. So it is doable to have a note on and a tail amount and still get a passable sound for different note divisions, like sixteenths and half notes, but you can't really have both sustained notes and short ones together that have the exact same tail behavior. Let's quickly demonstrate the differences I'm referring. So this sound has a bit of delay in spring reverb and it sounds great while sustained, right? So... And it also has a good amount of release or tail to the sound from the effects. But I know that this will be difficult to translate as a sustained tone key group. Looping will not include the tail information when playing and sound natural. Rather, it will loop a section of the sample as any amp envelope release allows. Further, it will be restricted to a set note duration with looping off. For example, I set that to 3 seconds and the envelope will either allow for the full tail to fade out or it will be cut short in parts of my musical phrase. So we would lose all the nuance of our naturally fading effects and be left with a fading volume of full sustained tone dominating over the effects any time that my notes are only about a second or less. So it may sound something a little more like that, as opposed to having the tail of that reverb and delay and so on, right? 
I could say I want one shots, but then the question arises for note length that may change from project to project or within a musical phrase. So there are some cases where the key groups can't quite cover everything. It's why I showed the example in the first video of a sustained tone that doesn't have any external effects and makes use of the looping to get any duration needed, where I could easily add internal effects on the MPC. And for this scenario where I want this real spring reverb and the charm that it adds to my sounds, I'll decide to lean into the short staccato notes with the external effects. So I'm going to set up a quick transient to excite the, the effects. And with that goal in mind, we know that a minimum setting for note length of 1000 milliseconds is a full second and even that is still too long of a strike of the tone and before you get frustrated just remember to dial away all the sustain in the amp envelope on your source instrument and go ahead and probably adjust the attack decay and release while you're at it so let me just kind of even those decay and release stages to be about the same so that no matter long my notes are held down, it's going to sound the same. Right? So that's sounding pretty good. Now for the tail amount, I know that I have the freedom to allow, say, uh, four or five seconds. So I'll just split it with four and a half. Now clearly, uh, the tail and the note length uh, amounts will be summed together for a total amount of sample time and my tone is currently one that leans towards one shot behavior so let's go ahead and make sure that the looping is off and I'll go ahead and give this a quick base name so yeah we'll make it the current program and so let's go ahead and hit the do it and I'll skip forward Now that we're done, once again, I may want to go into the program edit and check a few things. And really, I'll just set the key group selection to all here on the master tab. I'll be choosing to toggle this to one shot behavior for the program, but first let's see what the note on does for us here. So let's go ahead and audition a little bit of our program here. Right? <laughs> Now we get right away that uh, we need some kind of envelope opened up on, on this. So let's be sure that all is selected. Then we can go ahead and dial in a amount of release. So let's, well, let's just move it right on up to say 90, a little bit higher this time. Okay, that sounded pretty good at 95. And this is totally fine in that I can still optionally make my notes a little shorter even with the release stage clearly at the point of lifting my finger from the pads. And this fade will potentially truncate the beautiful tails, right? So let's go and toggle the one-shot mode for all zones. And back at the envelope tab, we can now see our envelope choices have changed to reflect a percussive approach with either the attack decay or the attack hold decay sustain. So let's just open up the decay here on, uh, I'll change it to decay from the start and I'll grab that decay and we'll just open that to be somewhere around the 100 mark. So it's sounding pretty good. And I would encourage you to go ahead and explore all the different modes of the envelopes and what they might do for you. So, you know, obviously a lot of choices here. Now let's go ahead and basically move on from all of this because... Uh, I didn't really want to talk about envelopes so much as I wanted to cover the layers. Let's say I'm wanting a bit of a different response on my tone for an optional velocity layer. 
that I didn't have over the MIDI control. So the idea here is to make a small adjustment to my source sound to create another layer in the auto sample that can be triggered at a different velocity response. If, for example, I'm going for a higher velocity layer, I want to typically make it a touch brighter by opening the filter, perhaps even a shift in the waveform mix. And here I'm going to go for a softer layer with perhaps a bit more bottom end by blending in some of the sub oscillator touch and moving my filter to a different setting as I am in the band pass mode of this filter right now. A quick note though, before you try and capture, if you had the box checked that made the current track the recently captured auto sample right here, you will have to go to another track and set up the CV or MIDI control again because currently my track for triggering is the program that I just created. So I'm gonna have to exit out. I'm gonna need to go to a different track, set up MIDI control. Now that that's done, I can go back and enter that in. And now I have the correct track for triggering and I can go ahead and make some adjustments to my tone here. Let's Okay, I'm liking that. And I'm going to go ahead and keep all the other settings except for I'm going to go ahead and give it a slightly different bass name uh, in conjunction with the one that I just created. So I might append it with something like a SFT for soft, uh, as in my soft layer, right? So now all the other settings are going to remain for ease with the exception of this checkbox to make it the current track. I don't actually want to save this individual key group, let alone make it an independent track this time. So now I can go ahead and hit do it and I'll skip forward again. Now that's done, I could probably continue and do another layer because I do have room for the four layers total. And I would probably start to dial away more wave mixing or whatever to create different layers as it were and you can explore how you want to stack your variations. But I won't do any extra for now as these two layers will be good for my next bit of demo. Now let's just go back to our original key group here. We'll hit the program edit. Now what I'm gonna to need to do to assign all these is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I have key group one selected. And I can do this from you know, several different pages. I could do it here on the samples page. I could do it here on the pan velocity page. Works pretty well. Now I can easily see the first layer sample is labeled with a base name and its name is appended with a MIDI note number. Now this number is pretty handy here as the octave and key identifier for the sample of this key group zone. So on layer two, I'll just scroll to the set of samples with the base name that I more recently made and find the identifier note number that matches. So there we are, SFT number 36. And now I'll just do this for every key group zone. Okay, so now obviously the thing to do here is to select all key groups and then I would change my velocity start for one layer to be somewhere around, I don't know, 100. We'll say 101, and we'll say the velocity end for the other layer, the softer layer, will be 100. And that works all pretty good, right? So I could have more layers and I can do other things like uh, adjust the overall volume. Um, here I could take my higher velocity level down, for example, and then go to the master page and turn up the volume for all key groups as a type of makeup gain.
right? So there's things you can do there. So I'm pretty sure you get the idea here, but let's go ahead and add in some bonus fun, right? So again, I've got this all dialed up for a nice shift in tone from velocity changes and the basic envelope settings I want. So maybe now would be a good time to go ahead and save this program as a good preset start for any given project. So you could just exit out, hit that pencil icon and save to your location of choice. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and reset my velocity layers so that they are both playing together as a stack essentially. And the other thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna probably go ahead and pan these hard left and right. And this way I get sort of this uh, two complementary tones uh, from the same source instrument, but you know, spread apart in the in the mix, right? So let's listen to that. Not bad, eh? Now obviously I can get a little bit crazier with all this. So for example, if I go to the samples tab, page two. I can make sure all is selected and I can do uh, maybe a little bit of detune if I wanted, you know, and set them apart even more. But let's go ahead and check out the third page of the samples tab. Going into this page three on the samples tab, we have the offsets. Now this is pretty neat stuff, but it's a little cryptic. So the control has a different effect when set in positive amounts versus then the negative amounts. So I'll adjust the second layer into the positive and maybe you can guess what it does. Well, if it's unclear, I can move into extreme amounts and maybe you'll notice that the sample with a positive offset is being triggered with the start point moved further into the sample. So I lose the attack portion but retain the body of tone, but now the overall sample time is lessened. The potential here is, for example, if I want a nice bass tone but I don't want the pluck of the string, just the body of the tone for extra heft to my sound. Moving the same layer into the negative offset gives me this. Now let's go ahead and make it a little bit more drastic. See, now that's a bit easier to hear because it's simply a delay that is being applied to that sample trigger. It's just coming in a little bit late. So you know what will make all of this even nicer is just a simple extra layering of our sample layers to make a unison sound. Yes, I'm going to load in the same samples to fill out the other two layers. So again, select each zone, find the base name, and note number to match, and we should be good to go. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, looks like I've got everything all set up now. So let's go ahead and head back to the pan velocity page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the matching samples. So on the odd layers, I'll spread those apart in the mix and the even layers apart. Now let's go back to our fine tuning. And I'm going to go ahead and just change it up so we get that detuned and stereo goodness going on. Uh, unison stacking. You know, it is only, you know, a couple of each tone, but still. Now, let's go ahead and play with, um, well, not the delay. Let's, let's just put it into some of the positive offset there for uh, more of the body of the tone to um, coincide with the normal strike. And now we can listen to this. 
And another thing you may consider is lowering the volume a touch. Uh, you know, just depends on your mix. Okay, sounded pretty cool. Um, obviously, I might want to change the amount of detune that I have going on on everything, but for the most part. So now this is sounding pretty awesome, right? So let's go ahead and hear what it would be maybe in context. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the arpeggiator. Maybe I just want a simple up down, but I want it to be over two octaves. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> So that sounded pretty awesome, and no one would ever likely guess that it all originated from a microbrute, right? So let's go a little deeper and say we want some randomness for our triggers. So we would go here to the master tab and just select random, and we could have, you know... Have it sort of randomly pan around or selecting the different tones and stuff, so... A lot of good possibilities there, obviously. Um, going back to the unison, let, well, let's find another direction we can take. So I'm going to go to the LFO modulation tab, and I'm going to say let's try a synced LFO. So we'll set it to be the same as the arpeggiator 16th, and I'm going to go ahead and up, mm, let's... Let's go for a saw down and apply that to the amp envelope. Now, I'll go back and turn on my arpeggiator. So now, of course, I can go on and add in the different filter shapes and envelopes to that and so forth. But this is a good end to this session. And I notice saving the program at this point with uh, multiple layers of the same sample will save those individual uh, layers again. Um, essentially, I believe what it's doing is it's saving the same sample source but appended with the layer identifier. Uh, but I think it's still very worth it to explore having the same sample in different layers for random to cyclic variations or unison effects. And I hope you enjoyed this session and learned a few new tricks to use in your productions. I'd love to hear from all of you and would appreciate that thumbs up if you found this video useful. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do it already so I can keep bringing the goods. Keep exploring, have fun, and take care.